Did you know that you can add plotting methods to the end of data processing chains? And so we can go from the same starting point, that same data frame, and get to a very different rendered output. Let me show you. In this video, we're going to take the Irish data set and we're going to perform a number of different data processing techniques and then render those outputs into some sort of plot like a bar plot, box plot, or histogram. We're also going to change the output of our plotting library from the default, which is typically matplotlib, and switch that to plotly so the plots that we render will be interactive. In the next cell, I'm going to take the load iris method, create my data frame, and then also change the column headers to something a little bit shorter. It doesn't necessarily matter for this and show the first five rows. In this notebook, I'm actually running it side by side so that it's easier to see the comparisons between the various methods and their corresponding outputs. To do this, you just push Shift R and you can go from standard view to the side by side view. And in this cell, you can see we're gonna start from our data frame and we have each method separated by line. You can actually comment them out the key thing to note is that you have to have parentheses wrapped around the entire method chain. And so here is our data frame. This is the standard iris data set. We have 150 rows, five columns, and the fifth column in this case is that target column. And so because I want to make a, a box plot and I want to separate them based on the variable I'm measuring, the sepal length, sepal width, I want to melt the data frame based on the target and that will then create a new column called variable that will contain each of my variables. So sepal length, pedal width, and the others are contained within. And then my next step is to create a box plot where I will also color by variable. My X value will be the value, which is this column once that is produced from the melt method. And as you can see, we've created a nice box plot from these methods. And so this is a relatively short chain of methods. We have a single melt and plot but we can do a lot more. And so throughout this notebook, you're gonna see how we're gonna start from the same data frame starting point and perform many more types of complex method processing. So here already you can see there's a lot more steps in this processing chain, but I wanna demonstrate how we can go from the same starting point as we do this. So here we have the first thing we wanna do is group by the target column and then return the mean of these data. And that is the first row. So if I just uncomment that, you can see how we go from this initial data frame to another data frame that only has three rows. Again, that's because we're grouping by target and then we're gonna take the mean, calculate the mean of each variable based on this grouped variable. Next, I wanna create a new variable called new index that has three random words. And you will see why we do that later. So here we have a, a column called new index. And in the next step, I'm going to set this new index to the index using the set index method. And now you see we re we've replaced that target column with this new index column. And then next we will actually plot a bar plot from this data. And the purpose of this is that so that we can see the distribution of values as a function of, in this case, whether you will like the video, comment on the video, or subscribe to the channel. But in reality, if we want to see how these variables vary by class or by target, we can do that pretty easily with this set of methods. Next, we have our same data frame. And in a previous video, I showed how we can chain our own custom functions by using the pipe method. So one of the key properties of this pipe method is that it takes in a data frame and outputs a data frame if you want to chain it to another data frame method. And so in this case, I'm going to pipe in my get PCA DF, which again will compute the PCA of the data frame and also returns a data frame. And so when I run this, I now go from my five columns to my three columns, which are called component one, component two, and component three, which again are the scores variables from this PCA. The next thing I want to do is merge in the target column. So I want to put that target column back on. That's actually stripped away when I do PCADF. And then the last thing I want to do is create a scatter plot where I'm now plotting component one versus component three. I want to color by target and set the size equal to one, but ensure that that length is the size of my data frame. So first I'll comment that and then run that. 
and you see that we now have our scores plot where I'm plotting PC1 versus PC3 and I've actually made the points much larger just for visualization purposes. And now you see we have three different combinations of methods which have now each created their own set of plots, a box plot, a bar plot, and a scatter plot. Next, we're going to create a bubble chart from this. And again, we have our same starting point. The next thing I want to do is convert my target column to the string type. And this is largely for visualization purposes. The next thing I want to do is create a scatter plot. So now you can see that here, the output of this line is a data frame. It's important to note that the output of this dot plot line is now a figure. And this is key because what we chain next has to be a method of the figure. If you want to track that, you can use the type method. And if we comment that line out, you see that the type is data frame. If we add this line back in, you see the type is this plotly graph objects figure. And thus, if you chain any new methods to it, it must be a plotly graph objects figure method. And so in this case, if you want to save the image, we simply run this line. We were to go in the folder, you will see we now have our bubble chart saved as this vector image. So the goal of this video is to demonstrate how we can take the same core data frame structure, chain in some data processing methods, as well as ways to render or visualize this data in a variety of different ways. One of the key steps I want you to be aware of is that we actually can change the back end from the default matplotlib to the plotly method, and we have a we have access then to a number of different plotting algorithms. Of course, you could do the same thing if we didn't change the back end. But in any case, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.